Earth, a planet teeming with life in an astonishing array of forms. From the deepest oceans to the highest mountains, life has adapted and thrived. But have you ever wondered how all this diversity began? Today, we'll journey back over three and a half billion years to explore the last universal common ancestor, or Luca, the shared origin point from which all life on Earth descends. To understand Luca, we must first envision the conditions of the early Earth. Approximately four and a half billion years ago, our planet formed from the accretion of dust and gas orbiting the young sun. This period, known as the Hadean Eon, was characterized by extreme temperatures and a molten surface due to frequent collisions with other celestial bodies. As Earth cooled, a solid crust formed and volcanic outgassing created a primitive atmosphere rich in water vapour, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, methane and ammonia, but lacking free oxygen. The condensation of water vapour led to the formation of the first oceans. The early atmosphere and oceans were subjected to intense energy inputs from ultraviolet radiation, lightning and geothermal activity. These energy sources drove chemical reactions among simple molecules, leading to the synthesis of more complex organic compounds, a process known as prebiotic chemistry. Experiments like the famous Miller-Urey experiment in 1952 demonstrated that organic molecules such as amino acids could form under simulated early Earth conditions. This set the stage for the emergence of life by providing the basic building blocks necessary for biological systems. The concept of the last universal common ancestor arises from the observation that all known life forms share fundamental biological characteristics. LUCA represents the most recent organism from which all organisms now living on Earth have a common descent. It's crucial to distinguish that LUCA was not the first life form, but rather the last common node in the tree of life before the divergence into the three domains, bacteria, archaea and eukarya. By analysing molecular sequences, such as ribosomal RNA genes, scientists construct phylogenetic trees that trace evolutionary relationships. These molecular phylogenies reveal that despite the vast diversity of life, there is a set of core genes and biochemical pathways shared by all organisms. This universality suggests that these features were inherited from LUCA and have been conserved due to their essential roles in cellular function. What evidence supports the existence of LUCA? Molecular biology provides compelling clues. First, the universal genetic code. Almost all organisms use the same genetic code to translate DNA or RNA sequences into proteins. This code specifies how sequences of three nucleotides, known as codons, correspond to amino acids. Second, shared biochemical pathways. Fundamental metabolic processes such as glycolysis and the citric acid cycle are conserved across all domains of life. These pathways are essential for energy production and biosynthesis. Third, ribosomes and protein synthesis. All cells possess ribosomes, complex molecular machines that synthesize proteins. The structure and function of ribosomes are remarkably similar, suggesting a common origin. Fourth, ATP as energy currency. Adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, is universally used by cells to store and transfer energy. The enzymes involved in ATP synthesis and utilization are conserved. Fifth, lipid membranes. Cellular membranes composed of lipid bilayers are a universal feature, providing compartmentalization and selective permeability. And finally, DNA replication mechanisms. The enzymes responsible for DNA replication, such as DNA polymerases, exhibit conserved structural motifs and functional mechanisms. These universal traits indicate that they were present in LUCA and have been maintained throughout evolution due to their fundamental importance for life.
by comparing the genomes of modern organisms, especially those considered to be ancient lineages, scientists have inferred certain characteristics of LUCA. LUCA likely had a DNA-based genome with genes organized in a manner similar to modern prokaryotes. It possessed enzymes for DNA replication and repair, indicating sophisticated genetic machinery. LUCA had ribosomes for translating RNA into proteins using a universal genetic code. It could perform basic metabolic functions such as glycolysis and possibly utilized chemiosmotic gradients to produce ATP. LUCA had a lipid bilayer membrane providing compartmentalization essential for maintaining homeostasis. Evidence suggests that LUCA was thermophilic or hyperthermophilic, thriving in high temperature environments like hydrothermal vents. Furthermore, LUCA may have been anaerobic, relying on chemical energy sources rather than oxygen, which was scarce in Earth's early atmosphere. Its metabolism likely involved the utilization of inorganic molecules like hydrogen, sulfur and iron compounds. The hydrothermal vent hypothesis posits that life began in the deep ocean around hydrothermal vents, where seawater interacts with magma-heated rocks. These vents emit hot, mineral-laden fluids rich in hydrogen, methane and sulphur compounds. There are two main types of hydrothermal vents. Black smokers, which emit high-temperature fluids up to 400 degrees Celsius, rich in sulphides that precipitate upon contact with cold seawater, forming chimney-like structures, and white smokers, which emit cooler fluids rich in barium, calcium and silicon, forming lighter-coloured deposits. The steep chemical gradients at these vents could have driven abiotic synthesis of organic molecules and provided energy sources for primitive metabolic pathways. The porous mineral structures might have acted as natural reactors, concentrating organic compounds and facilitating the formation of protocells. Laboratory experiments have demonstrated that amino acids, nucleotides and lipid precursors can form under simulated hydrothermal vent conditions. Additionally, modern vent ecosystems host a diversity of microorganisms, including chemautotrophs that obtain energy by oxidizing inorganic molecules, representing a possible analogue to early life forms. Advances in genomics have allowed scientists to identify a set of genes that are universally conserved, providing insights into LUCA's genetic makeup. These genes are involved in core metabolic functions such as enzymes for glycolysis, nucleotide synthesis and amino acid biosynthesis. They are also involved in genetic information processing with components of DNA replication, transcription and translation machinery. Additionally, there are proteins involved in membrane transport responsible for transporting molecules across the cell membrane. Interestingly, Luca's genome appears to have been quite complex with estimates of around 500 to 1,000 genes. This suggests that significant evolutionary developments occurred before LUCA. Moreover, early life likely experienced high rates of horizontal gene transfer, where genes are exchanged between organisms without reproduction. Horizontal gene transfer can occur through conjugation, which is the direct transfer of DNA via cell-to-cell -cell contact. Transformation, which is the uptake of free DNA from the environment, and transduction, which is the transfer of DNA by viruses or bacteriophages. Horizontal gene transfer complicates the reconstruction of evolutionary relationships as it creates a network-like pattern, rather than a simple branching tree. This genetic exchange may have been crucial for early evolution, allowing organisms to rapidly acquire new functions. Despite significant progress, the nature of LUCA and the origins of life remain subjects of intense scientific debate. Several competing hypotheses offer different perspectives. First, there's the RNA world hypothesis. It suggests that RNA was the original genetic material. RNA can both store genetic information and catalyze chemical reactions, like ribozymes, potentially allowing for self-replication before the evolution of DNA and proteins. Then, we have the metabolism-first models. 
These propose that self-sustaining metabolic networks emerged before genetic information systems. Simple chemical reactions could have formed autocatalytic cycles leading to increased complexity. There's also the lipid world hypothesis, which focuses on the role of lipids and the spontaneous formation of vesicles. These vesicles could encapsulate and concentrate organic molecules, facilitating chemical reactions. And finally, there's the panspermia hypothesis, the idea that life or its precursors arrived on Earth from extraterrestrial sources via meteorites or cometary impacts. The discovery of extremophiles, organisms that thrive in extreme conditions, has expanded our understanding of life's adaptability. For example, thermophiles and hyperthermophiles live in hot springs and hydrothermal vents, while acidophiles and alkaliphiles survive in extreme pH environments. These organisms provide modern analogues for potential early life forms and inform models of how life might originate under harsh conditions. Additionally, research into synthetic biology and the creation of artificial life forms in the laboratory continues to shed light on the minimal requirements for life and the possible pathways for abiogenesis. Studying LUCA has profound implications for our understanding of evolution. For example, tracing the origins of core metabolic processes helps explain how organisms adapted to different energy sources. Investigating LUCA provides context for the origins of cellular life and the later development of eukaryotic cells, which likely arose through endosymbiosis, where one cell engulfs another, leading to organelles like mitochondria and chloroplasts. Recognizing conserved genetic and biochemical features emphasizes the importance of certain molecules and pathways. These new insights can help guide research in medicine and biotechnology. Understanding the conditions under which life emerged on Earth also informs the search for life elsewhere in the universe. Extraterrestrial life. Identifying biosignatures and habitable environments is a key focus of astrobiology. Moreover, Luca's study underscores the interconnectedness of all life forms. It highlights how evolutionary pressures shape organisms and drive diversification, leading to the vast array of species we see today. As we push the frontiers of science, new technologies and interdisciplinary research are enhancing our understanding of life's origins. Astrobiology missions like NASA's Perseverance rover on Mars aim to detect signs of past life by analyzing rocks and soil for organic compounds and microbial fossils. Exploration of ocean worlds involve missions that aim to explore subsurface oceans on moons like Europa and Enceladus, which may harbour conditions suitable for life. Researchers are attempting to create artificial cells and minimal genomes, a field of study known as synthetic biology, testing hypotheses about the minimal requirements for life. Sequencing DNA from environmental samples without the need for culturing organisms allows for the discovery of novel genes and organisms expanding our knowledge of biodiversity. Each discovery, whether it be new extremophiles on Earth or complex organic molecules in space, brings us closer to answering fundamental questions about how life begins and evolves. The quest to understand Luca is not just about unraveling the past, it's about exploring the potential for life throughout the cosmos. In exploring the concept of LUCA, we've delved into the shared molecular and genetic heritage that binds all living organisms. Despite the immense diversity of life, from the simplest bacteria to the most complex multicellular organisms, we all share a common ancestor. This shared lineage is a testament to the unity of life and the evolutionary processes that have shaped it over billions of years. Understanding LUCA is more than an academic pursuit. It provides insights into the fundamental mechanisms of biology, informs the search for life beyond Earth, and deepens our appreciation of the natural world.
As we continue to explore, research and discover, we move closer to answering one of humanity's most profound questions. How did life begin? Thank you for joining us on this journey through the depths of time and the origins of life. If you found this exploration enlightening, please like, share and subscribe to Science Curious.